great having you stop by. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and this is Monday. It is August 5th. Now, what I like to do on this show is just to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock, at least in my opinion. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. There is no shortage of penny stocks. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for hot penny stocks. Stocks that have potential to make us money. Not just so I can trade them, but that I have something to share with you. And I've got one. This is Phoenix Motor, ticker PEV. Now what caught my attention to this stock was she was running on the charts today. She was flying. She hit a high of about 32% gains before she fell back to about 18%. But what really caught my attention was June 26th. She started the fall and over the next three days, she fell about 50%. Why? Well, I came over here looking for an answer to that question. I did find a piece of news that came out on the 26th and nothing else, but it was good news. There was nothing bad in it. And still for the next three days, the stock fell 50%. Now she is recovering and she is looking like she's breaking out through that 200 and we've got a catalyst sitting on the table. I'm thinking now is a real good time to at least consider PEV. So Pev, she finished the day today almost 50 cents and she was up almost 18%. Now this is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, which comes with benefits compared to the OTC market. First off, there's no transaction fees trading on the major exchange. You can trade pre-market, after-market. There's a heck of a lot more volume and money on the major exchange, and there's a heck of a lot more rules, which just keeps our investments safer. So what is Phoenix Motor about? We're going to get that information over here in their most recent news press. They tell us here that Phoenix Motor is a pioneer in the electric vehicle industry. The company currently operates under two primary brands. Their newest brand, Phoenix EV focusing on commercial products such as heavy and medium duty EVs, including transit buses, shuttle buses, school buses, and delivery trucks like flatbeds and vans. They also have a research and development division they call Edison Future. They are now working on solar powered vans and solar powered pickups. Now there's more going on with this company than they have in the description. And I'm going to pick this up from this news press. And this is the news press that came out the day the stock started falling, June 26th. And as I said, I see nothing bad in this news press whatsoever. They tell us here that Phoenix EV emerges as premier leader in zero emission vehicles following Proterra transit bus business acquisition. Phoenix Motor recently acquired Proterra Transit Bus Division into its existing medium duty business, heralding the birth of a new powerhouse brand, Phoenix EV. Now they tell us here it was January 17th that this acquisition closed. It seems that Phoenix Motor got a hold of this company through a bankruptcy sale. It looks like Proterra Transit was in bankruptcy. This company came in and scooped them up. They go on to tell us that Phoenix EVs, cutting edge electric buses, reign supreme in sustainable public transportation. With over 1,200 buses already deployed throughout the US, I know they've got over 1,000 customers. This union of capabilities in medium and heavy duty shuttles, trucks, school buses, and transit buses, coupled with a seasoned team operating out of both California and South Carolina, they got offices on both coasts, fortifies Phoenix EV's unmatched product range and proven electric commercial vehicles. With over 55 million miles driven on its zero emission solutions, Phoenix EV is now capable of offering combined solutions for various classes and applications in the commercial fleet, school, and transit markets. We are thrilled to unveil our new brand identity of Phoenix EV. In conjunction with the new Phoenix EV brand identity, the company has launched a new website, phoenixev.ai. This is their new website. Let me back this up. It's a nice website. They've got some great information over here. They've got some good media. They really go into a lot of details about what they're doing. If you really want to get through the information quickly, hit this investor button right there. It'll bring you to a page which has got two forms of media I really appreciate. 
One, they've got a video here, and then they have their investor deck down here. An investor deck is a digital brochure, which will tell you all sorts of stuff about the company in a real nice format. They'll just lay this information out for you. Now, we're not going to go through this, but there is a lot of information here that you can dive into on your own time. All right, let's jump into that news because we got to build onto this when we look at the stock information. I have jumped back here to May 13th, which is as far as the news here goes, but I assure you there is more news out there. On May 13th, they told us that Phoenix Motors started their fourth generation production of their medium duty EVs. They're getting better. Every generation is an improvement to their products. Then on uh, May 29th, they receive a NASDAQ listing delinquency letter. Now, this doesn't surprise me. When they got into this deal with Proterra in January, it made it difficult for them to do their financials because they had to combine the new company. So this made them late on their financials and they're in hot water now because of it. Well, what surprises me here is they don't mention anywhere that we have a minimum bid price requirement non-compliance. They've been under a dollar for many months. And I did go tagging through the 8Ks to see if there was another NASDAQ warning. I couldn't find one. So I would expect that warning to come out here soon. We need to get this price up over a dollar, close over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Now they're not in hot water yet, but I'm telling you, it's gotta be right around the corner. And as you can see, just looking at the news here, the first quarter's financials are a big deal. They've been delayed multiple times. They were originally meant to come out at the end of May. They rescheduled twice for June, rescheduled for July. Now we've rescheduled for August. And it is a big deal, not just because they're late on them, but because it's our catalyst. We got a news press that came out here on July 11th. In it, they tell us that Phoenix Motor expects to exceed its previously issued record revenue guidance for Q1 2024. The company now expects to report $9.4 million for the first quarter revenues. The record quarterly revenue represents a significant increase from the $1.8 million a year ago, which was the company's previous record revenue quarter. Phoenix Motor also expects to report record gross profit and record net income for the first quarter of 2024. And as you're going to see by looking at their financials, we need this in a very big way. The transformative acquisition of Proterra Transit's business and battery lease portfolio during the first quarter has been a key driver behind our substantial year-over-year -year performance improvements, but has also led to unexpected delays related to our filing requirements. Our team is working diligently to complete our quarterly filing with the SEC, and we anticipate the process will be completed soon. They anticipate it so much that they've given us another date that they're supposed to be out. Thursday, August 15th, they'll report after the market at 430. If you want to tap into that, there's the phone number for you. And the last piece of news we got, Phoenix EV powers up University of California. Irvine with new electric bus fleet. The University of California in Irvine has just purchased five of their big buses, not their little shuttle buses, five of the big ones. And that's what we're expecting, folks. The country is going green. We are going to electric vehicles. And public transportation is a huge one. Every city has them. So this is a huge market that is just now starting to blossom. And this company is looking pretty ripe for the picking. Let's take a look at our relative volume for the company. Over the last 30 days, Phoenix Motors has been doing less than 200,000 shares a day. Today, she more than tripled that, going over 7,000 shares. But I wouldn't get too excited. Being on the NASDAQ, both of those numbers are still under the radar. Check out the share structure for PEV. Well, they don't give us a lot of information here. All we know is the outstanding share count, which isn't bad. It's under 35 million. Now, not knowing what our float is or what the insiders own to figure it out, best we can say is it can't be more than the outstanding share count. So even if our float is 34 million, that's not a bad float. Anytime your float is less than 100 million, it's a decent float. Market cap for the company, we're at about 14 and a half million. 
check out those financials. All right, remembering to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. Over the last four years, the revenues have been all over the place. She was at a high of 4.5 million four years ago, dropped down to just under 3 million, popped back up to 4.3, and at the end of 2023, she fell down to 3.1. The bad news is she's rarely ever making a profit. 2022 was a dynamite year compared to the others. At the end of 2023, she was down $276,000 out of 3.1 million revenue. Quarterlies, yikes. Oh, that's horrific. One year ago, we were at $1.7 million. We fell down to 288,000 September of 2023. And the very last quarter of 2023, we were losing money. Our revenues were minus 105,000. Then add on the losses. So now we've got $383,000 loss. Now you know why I say the financials coming out are our catalyst. We can use that 9.2 million, don't you think? Take a look at the balance sheet for the company. Cash and cash equivalents, what I like to call the bank, they got 3.3 million. Total assets, about 11.5 million. And total liabilities is more, about 16.5 million which means we are holding stockholder deficit in this company of just about five million. So fundamentally wise, it doesn't look all that good. We're holding stockholder deficit. She's not making a profit. Heck, she's not even making revenues. But can you see why 9.2 million revenues in the next financial with positive profit is gonna be good? Positive net income is gonna be great? I'm excited, can you tell? Check out those disclosures. I did poke my head into these 8Ks here, though I didn't go all the way back. I did not see a warning about their minimum bid price. We are under a dollar, so I am expecting that. The one thing we do notice here is that NT10Q, which is an abbreviation for we're not filing our quarterly financial on time. That was back on the 15th of May. By filing this, they got five extra days. <clears throat> Well, they didn't get him in by the 20th by a long shot. So this is our catalyst right now, folks. The financials are in bad shape. We are losing money hand over fist. We can use millions of dollars on the books. That's going to put us in the green. Net income, net profit, net revenue, it's all going to be good. So I think this is a company we need to watch by, when did they say that was going to come out? Uh, August 15th. I put it on my watch list up to August 15th. Hopefully they actually come out with the financials this time. Let's go take a look at that chart. So let's chart PEV on my free trading platform, TOS. That's short for Think or Swim. We are going to chart Phoenix ship. Let's chart PEV on my free trading platform, TOS. That's Think or Swim. We are looking at Phoenix Motors on a six-month, four-hour view. As you can see, she's been in a downtrend most of this time. We did have a breakout attempt here, and we got one going on right now. Now, it was back in January, we hit a high of $1.62, and in June, we hit an all-time low, never been this low before, of 31.5 cents. Now, once she broke through that 200 up here at about buck twenty-two, she went into a downtrend for a few months, stopping at around 45 cents here, turning around and busting loose towards that 200. She got up on top of it and had no right even trying. This 200-day SMA is way too steep to be trying to break out. But look at her hang on up there, tooth and nail, for over two weeks. Then the good news came out on June 26th. She was at about 70 cents and she plummeted over the next few days down to that all-time low of 31 and a half cents. Why? I have no idea. We had some bouncing around while she was down here. Once she hit this 200 haul, she bounced off of that, cutting through all of her SMAs, piercing the 200, coming back down and floating on top of her nine-day SMA. All of our other SMAs are turned and starting to climb. Our 200 haul our 20, and our 50. Everything looks like it's ready to climb now. All of our oscillators are climbing, except our RSI, which is pulled back just a little bit. Now, before we leave this page, I want to get some SNRs. 
some supports and resistances. So I'm going to grab some obvious ones here. We got one right there. You can see everything sitting on top of that. That is at about 90 cents roughly. We got another one about right there. That is at 83 cents. And you know what? I think I'm going to grab the rest of these with my Fibonacci. The Fibonacci is a tool that I like to use whenever I have a big run up or a big drop down. I will poke the very top and the very bottom of the run. And this will give me algorithmic supports and resistances. All of these right here, they are not attached to any historical price points, but they're legitimate. The price will respect them. We can trade off of these. So we've got a couple up here at 82 and 90, and then we've got a whole bunch here going down to that 34 cents. All right, let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. Well, that's very interesting. Look at that 200-day SMA. She is falling at a 45% incline here. That is very steep. And though we can't see what's going on right there, look, it's totally flat now. It is ready for a breakout. She was going sideways with a little bit of climb, pierced it, fell down, got a nice piercing through it here, but just laid on it. I'm not really sure why this turned our 200, but it did. She fell down to our strong support down here of 34, bounced off of that, has cut through the 200, bounced off of it, launched herself going through many different resistances here, hitting a high one here of about 57 cents and pulling back to about 45 cents. And right now it looks like she's just dangling there. But look at all of our SMAs. All of them are turned up, getting ready to cross that 200. Those are all going to be golden crosses. You can normally expect extra power to the price in climbing with those. As you can see, our volume has been growing. Today was a very strong day, exceptionally. Oscillators on our one hour chart are cooling off because of all of this aftermarket activity that is pulling it down right now. Let's come on down to the five day 15 minute. So there's our low bubble, 33 cents. She got up on top of that strong support, worked her way right up over that 200, nice and easy, bounced off of our 50 day SMA, got a launch here from 41 cents to 57 cents roughly, came back down to the nine day. After market, she was still holding it. And then something happened here. She crashed through her 20, her 200 haul and the 50, and she's come back up sitting on the 50. We do see some weakness on the chart right now. All of our oscillators, our PPO, percentage price oscillator, and our MACD are both falling. These two are very much alike, except the MACD uses the full price and the percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. The good news is, though we really can't see it on the chart right now, it says our RSI is climbing, which means we have a green bar somewhere. So let's come on down to that five day, five minute. All right, let's try the one day, one minute. One little green bar right there, folks. She's come down and she is starting to push up right now. I'm not saying that's super hot. What I'm saying is we want to get a position before the August 15 financials. We are going to go from minus 105,000 as their revenues for the last quarter of 2023 to over $9 million in the first quarter of 2024. That's going to be hot, folks. In my opinion, this stock is going to bounce and then surge. So I'm thinking you need to find yourself a cheap entry point. And the more she dips right now, the better it is. Now, she could come back down to this 43 cents. I'd be looking for that. I'd probably put in a standing order down here for some of what you want. Folks, when you are trading, unless you know you're going to get in and out really, really fast, don't buy everything at once. You don't know what the stock's going to do. It may look like it's going to bounce here, so you buy everything, and then it comes down even further. Well, if you only buy 25% of what you want, which means you need a plan. How much are you going to buy, dollar-wise or share-wise? You need to know when you're going to exit. When you get into a trade, if you don't know when you're going to get out, chances are you're going to get stuck. Guessing on when to get out is how most people end up holding a bag. 
You need to find yourself a strong support re resistance and say, this is where I'm getting out, at least with something. 25%, 50% of what I have. You don't have to sell everything. You don't have to buy everything at one shot. Get used to buying some and buying more, especially when you're on the major exchanges. It doesn't cost you anything to make multiple purchases. Same thing selling. When she is climbing, start selling. Don't wait for it to start falling before you're encouraged to sell. Sell while it's taking gains. Don't get greedy. Get rich. Take the money when you have a chance to get it. So I like PEV, folks. Do some more research. There's a lot more information out there. They offer a lot of education, certifications, all wrapped around their products. So there is a lot to know. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. Thank you.